I wanted to do a um, quick recording here showing you what I was talking about last week uh, with Gerhard Richter. Gerhard Richter is somebody I think is so fascinating because he is a really well-known artist who had, throughout his career, two extremely different lines of work. One that's totally abstract, one that is hyper-realistic. Um, so a very traditional style of painting and style of representation. Um, and I think it's very instructive uh, what he has been able to accomplish. And it's remarkable because typically you think of artists having a singular style or a singular voice. And typically that's part of the power of uh, these artists is they're re very recognizable. And um, they kind of have a contribution that is identifiable. Um, in this case, both his abstracts and his representational work uh, are just as recognized and celebrated, which is also very interesting. Um, but on one hand, we have work like this that is totally abstract. He's, they're big canvases, uh, usually. And he applies the paint with these plexiglass squeegees. Let me see if I can find a better example. So you can see this board that extends across the whole canvas there, and he's just dragging that board down across the, the surface uh, that has a bunch of wet paint on it, or he'll go from side to side like he's doing here with these big squeegees. He calls them squeegees, I believe, uh, but basically they're just devices with wood on one side of the right angle and plexiglass on the other, and he just drags those things across and gets these kind of uh, palette knifey, palette knife kinds of marks. Anyway, he's, he's done uh, lots of different versions uh, and iterations on this uh, a similar idea, um, but then on the opposite end of the spectrum, you have images like this. He did a series of, of paintings he's well known for um, are kind of blurry, fairly accurately copied uh, photorealistic images from newspaper photos of different um, characters from history and uh, people from like war heroes and war villains and and. Uh, like an image like this, a fairly standard or, or kind of recognizable and highly representational, highly realistic uh, rendering of clouds. Very, uh, like, intensely good craft. If you look at these, they're beautiful paintings, um, but totally opposite from these more abstract works. And then what I was referring to in class, you get these kind of paintings, where he's taking some of that aesthetic, some of those that visual vocabulary that he's developed in his abstract work and starting to combine it and allow it to enter in his representational work. So this is one of the Twin Towers, and then there are these kind of squeegeed on, uh, or maybe while the paint was wet, he dragged a squeegee across this Twin Towers painting. He also did a series that I had mentioned of mothers and children um, where again he's kind of he's he's got elements of both the abstract mark making and the more kind of gestural um material um surface uh, that he has in his abstract and then you have this uh, really nicely rendered um masterfully rendered uh, image of the woman in the background and let me see if I can find another example of the combination of those two and looking at how just uh, lovely he he renders those those objects. Um, I think I saw one back here. Oh, I think it's the same one. Uh, anyway, if you do, uh, let's try a search for Gerhard Richter, mother and child. Let's try that because he did a he did a series of uh, some of these are breastfeeding ones. I saw this one in um, MoMA, and I thought it was an especially good example of this kind of uh, combination of his abstract and his figurative, starting to inform each other and also creating a tension that kind of they push against each other. The highly controlled and representational pushing against the more abstract kinds of mark making. 
So I think this is uh, it's just an interesting thing that uh, about his work to see how they, they, for a lot of his career, um, were two totally isolated and separate lines of inquiry or kinds of rendering and painting. And then they started creeping in and into the same paintings and starting to create this tension between these two different sides, almost like two personalities. He's got this split split personality, and they started to to merge. Um, what I think is wonderful about this, just on a like a psychological or practical art making level, is that he didn't he he recognized that he had an interest in really thick you know, loose abstract painting. And he had this appetite for and desire to also do more realistic, natu- like traditional kinds of rendering. And I think so often we feel like we have to choose one or the other, or like somehow we've got to come up with our own unique voice or something's wrong. You know, like, um, and I think he is like the illustration of, you know, like counter example to that. Like, not only is it okay to have multiple styles or multiple kinds of rendering that you're pursuing, but it's even, uh, you know, a benefit. It's even an asset where they can start to inform each other. And because you've been able to push in such opposite directions, the breadth of the tools that you have available to you or the visual vocabulary you have available to you is that much wider. So um, I think part of my, my comment and, or reason for bringing this up was uh, some kind of question about developing a unique visual style. And, and, and I would just reiterate here that um, I don't think you need to worry about it. I think you just need to worry about producing work and, and um, the visual style or if, any, if, if something settles and feels right to pursue uh, one particular kind of painting or style that that will happen naturally and, you know, it's not something that you need to worry about or focus on. And in fact, most of us probably have interests in lots of different kinds of styles and different ways of making art. And uh, we can allow those each to develop and start to inform each other and combine and create tension in interesting ways. Anyway, that is, uh, that's Gerhard Richter.